Yusuf Mashkur, welcome to the Progeny Podcast. Honor to be here. What do you work as? I'm a personal trainer and an online coach. Personal trainer. Um, how long have you been doing that? Professionally, yeah. close to five years, four or five years. Um, not professionally with my friends, a good six, seven years, eight years, Aslan. Wow. What got you into personal training? I mean, so as a career. Yeah. So I finished college and I was like, what the hell do I do? I looked at all of the uni degrees. I was like, okay, none of this suits me. I was like, you know what? Let me take a gap year, go for it and see how it goes. And it's literally been my life since I was 14. Instead of studying for my exams, I mean, I've done all right. But instead of studying for my exams, I'd be there watching fitness videos, researching, making no I'd make more notes on this kind of stuff than I did for my exams. Yeah. And this is why, alhamdulillah, I'd like to think I know my stuff right now. Were your family okay with, you know, you not going the the normal Iraqi route okay. and then going <laughs> to something, you know. This is interesting. So at the start, no, because they thought, they thought they saw it as a joke. They don't know anything. They just saw Jim. Oh, he's just going Jim. He's just having fun. And then they started seeing, okay, he's making money. He's actually making an impact. He's changing people's lives. And then I actually did go uni for a little bit. But then I realized I'm just going to end up going back to what I already know. And then I left the university. So you didn't finish your university? I didn't. And I, in my opinion, unless, you ha unless you're going to university and you have a, that, that degree will lead you to go to that career path. For example, you want to become a doctor, you have to study medicine, etc. I don't believe, like if you've got something already going for you, I don't believe you should just go and throw away Optical. everything you have. Exactly. Unless, but un if you don't have anything and you don't want to go and you want to sit at home, then that's another story. Yeah, obviously. But if you've got something already going for you, why throw it away and put yourself in debt to go to university? I kind of agree because I always, <clears throat> I always say as well that you should do something that you enjoy. But as long as it, as long as it will put pays the food the on the table, as long as it pays the bill and puts the food on the table. So it's, it's paying the bills. Alhamdulillah. You don't have a lot of bills right now. Not right now, but Alhamdulillah. <laughs> well, Can't complain. I always, or, or some people think that, you know, what's the point of having a PT? Person That's see. This is a problem. It's okay. What's the point of having a physio? No, no, no. Let me finish. Uh, sorry. Personal trainer. All the, all the, all the, all the. Like right now with social media. Yes. I follow an app. I don't know what it's called. Uh, not an app. Um, a page on Instagram. Yes. And it's got, it's got, it does you daily workouts. For example, you can Correct. get them free, basically. Yeah. So you, you can, I'm sure there's other, there's other like there's pages many. or websites that give you training. Correct. On what you need to do. Why do I need it? Why, why, what's the point of a PT? I a number of reasons. First of all, you're going to watch this video. Who knows if you're doing it right? And secondly, why do you need the tutor? This is why I always say, you don't need the tutor. You have all the resources there. Huh? Why, send it, why, send your, why send your kids to a tutor? Some people need that extra push firstly. Mm -hmm. Secondly, not everyone's willing to put in that much time. So for example, I've literally dedicated my life to this. There is no way you're going to come and watch a few videos and be able to put yourself in a position where you'd be as good as you'd be with me. So I actually, I actually put a lot of clients away from me. I'm not here to take your money. I'm here to teach you how to train yourself. And that's my ultimate goal. So, so why about online teaching, online training? Because you said, you know, at least the person is there to teach you. Correct. How does online... Uh... So that is more so for people that know how to do things roughly. However... Mm -hmm. You can send me videos and I'll normally correct it. Mm -hmm. And if not, then I'll normally say, listen, this isn't like, I'm tried, I've am i tried my best. I recommend if you can't go to me, you go to someone else, let them teach you how to do it. And then we can continue from there. Is it a good a, a good business yeah, at the moment, do you think? Or? Alhamdulillah. I think, but I don't, I think it's with the personal training or the online coaching, this is a big issue I have. And I think, again, I throw it back at tuition. It's the same thing the barriers to entry for this kind of market is near nothing. So when it, just because you see someone have the qualification or have the course, it doesn't mean they know what they're talking about. For example, I can go become a tutor now and I can start teaching kids A-level maths. Who's, who's to stop me? Same thing with PTing. Anyone can go do a small course and do it. And it's a problem because let's say you, for example, you didn't know anything about training. You will come and trust me and listen to everything I say and you won't question it. And you're giving me, you're giving me your money. But for all you know, I could be screwing your life over. And you wouldn't know anything. And I've seen it, I see it countless times. The hardest clients I have to deal with are the clients that have previously had trainers that aren't good. There are good ones, but mm. honestly, there's maybe about 10, 15% of the trainers that I would actually trust. It's, it's not great.
why why is that because they they were being trained wrong there's no barriers to entry so anyone can come do it same way anyone can be a tutor so, so, so there's no qualifications there to is, become a PT. there is there is i'll be honest if you fail it then there's, there's a problem there's a problem <laughs> yeah. but same way tutor can anyone anyone here in this room can become a tutor right now mm. is there anything to stop you right now can a tutor not uh, for example an english tutor where there's no right and wrong she could be and i've seen it happen to my friends she could be teaching her student that Listen, this is right. This is yeah. A star. Come time for the exam, he gets his results. He's got a D. And who's? What can he do about it? It's the tutor's fault. But there's no one. There's no. There's no like. There's no one to regulate this these these industries. And I think it's a problem. And I think people need to do their own research, even though it's hard to try pick the right person. With the types of clients you're getting. Are you getting sort of the, the, the younger generation? Are you getting everything? You're getting a mix of everything. I've had 60 year olds, seven year olds, and I've had 15 year olds. But then each one will have a different, uh, they'll want to achieve something differently. So there's one building. Not up. necessarily, oh. but uh, they all have different goals, but yeah. I wouldn't attribute the goals to the age. Okay. I've had a 55 year old tell me I want to look like Arnold. <laughs> so <laughs> everyone has a different goal. It depends. I've had women that want to get strong. I've had guys that, just want to train to be healthy it depends on your goal and obviously the training will be adjusted towards that i'm guessing you do like food plan and diet correct do you need do you need a course for that yeah you need the nutrition you course but i personally work with nutritionists to provide the diet plans okay so yeah. someone else will, will exactly how important is when it comes to training is your food I hear 80 20, but I personally. 80 20 what? 80 20 nutrition, 20%. 80 nutrition, 20 what training. Do you think? Yeah, I've had that as well. I don't agree. I think it's hand in hand. You can't do one without the other. Go for weight loss, maybe, because technically, to be honest, you don't need to train for weight loss. As long as you're in a calorie deficit, you will lose weight. However, to put on muscle, try try just eating and not training 20% and eating 80% and try put on muscle. See how that works for you. It won't work. It won't work. Nope. It's, 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 it goes hand in hand with with, with your. With They're your hand in hand. They you can't. You have to do both. I'm guessing you spend most of your hours in the gym. Correct. Because obviously that's that's where your work is. But do you also because if you're training someone, I'm guessing you're you're, you're kind of also exercising or. Maybe at the start, mm -hmm. but eventually so it comes to a point where I'm just, just correcting. At the start, yeah, it's quite physical, but um. In terms of it being like compared to my my own training, is it physically exhausting? No, I'd say it's more so mentally exhausting, having to focus for that hour and be mentally there and physically present for that whole hour, and not losing focus because they, at the end of the day, if they get hurt, it's on me. I've always I've always wondered because everyone tells you something differently. Again, with with with, with exercising and training, you had different things. Definitely. Like this, you gave the example of the eighty twenty, which didn't make sense to doesn't or the fifty sense. fifty. Or for example, how long you should work out. Yeah. Like, you know, people say, you know, you shouldn't work out more than an hour. After an hour, anything that you're doing, I've heard this. Yeah. Anything you're doing after hour is, 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 is definitely tough. not true. Yeah, all this stuff. And there's a lot of, there's a lot of I'll fake dis news. I'll dispel the main few yeah. myths that we have. Yeah. There's too many. Okay. This, first of all, no food is your enemy. They actually done some research on this and they had two groups. They had one group, they were both overweight. Sorry, I can't remember if they were both overweight, but regardless, mm. they had one group eating whatever they wanted. I think it was McDonald's. It was a particular fast food chain. Mm. However, overall, their calories added up so that they were in a calorie deficit, yeah. meaning so everyone has their BMR, meaning your basal metabolic rate. I'm sure you've heard everyone say my metabolism is slow, my metabolism is fast. That's basically the amount of energy or calories you need to just exist. So just by you doing nothing. On top of that, you add your TDEE, which is your... I can't remember what it stands for, but it's basically the amount of energy used throughout the day. Total daily energy expenditure, I think. Yeah. And you get your maintenance calories. Now, anything below that is a calorie deficit, meaning you're going to lose weight. So they put this group in a calorie deficit, but eating fast food and unhealthy food, and they lost weight. And the other group, they were eating greens, they were eating vegetables, chicken breast, you name it. On a proper it. They're, diet. They're healthiest foods, but they were in a surplus and they gained weight. So in term, no food is your enemy. I'm not saying go eat whatever you want. Smash your face. Yeah. I'm saying everything in moderation and as long as you're in a deficit you will lose weight and there's no way around it and the reason is actually the reason why most people don't stick to anything because they think it's you're in a trick you're in a prison basically you can't touch this you can't touch this no carbs after six no carbs no nothing they're eating chicken breast and salad so who's gonna eat chicken breast and salad for the rest of their life it needs to be a more sustainable approach i'll be honest with you I, once i asked 
someone who's also a PT to give me a, a, a diet plan. Yeah. And then I looked at it and I thought, I'm not in a million years. Yeah, so oh my another God, I example. Chicken breast every day. And seven meals a day. And six... it has to be seven meals a day. Yeah, well, it... So you don't do that? Absolutely not. So that seven meals, chicken this breast, rubbish. salmon. Rubbish, rubbish, rubbish. I mean, look, ideally... In terms of rice. Ideally, yeah. you do want to keep most of your meals healthy and nutritious. But yeah. within reason, as long as you're within your calories... You can enjoy yourself. This is a lifestyle change. You, no one's going to eat chicken breast and salad for the rest of their life. And no one, you've got a 35-year-old woman and she comes to you for PT in or whatever and you give her six meals a day. Come on. How is she, <laughs> she going to stick to that? Yes. Yeah, Honestly, some of the stuff I see, I had someone come to me and their old trainer told them no salt. And if, <laughs> how, how are you going to eat without salt? <laughs> I beg you. Have you tried having chicken without salt? You can't have it. Not rice without salt. Chicken without, no salt. Lish, why? I don't know. Oh. So from your experience, what's the best diet for someone, let's say, to, who wants to lose weight pretty fast? So you can track your calories, but what happens with a lot of people is they get lost. What do I eat? What do I have? So I provide a diet plan, which is basically just a calculated deficit where you'll get all your macro and macronutrients from it. However, if you want to go off plan and have your own food, I'm more than happy with that as long as you're within your calorie and protein limit. So I'd say... For anyone that wants to lose weight, focus on tracking your calories and focus on tracking your protein. Don't worry too much about the carbs and the fats. Of course, they're important. But as long as you eat normally, by normally, I mean with every meal, you have a little bit of carbs, whether it's rice, potato, sweet potato, whatever it is. Have a splash of veggies and have a protein source, whether you're vegeta if you're a meat eater, meat, chicken, salmon, something like that. And you'll be fine as long as you're within your calories. There's nothing you need to cut out. You can, you can have carbs after six. Carbs aren't your enemy. If you cut out your fats, your hormones are going to get ruined. Cut out your carbs. Your... There's so many side effects to keto. Let me not get started. Yeah, ke I was going to ask you about keto. Because oh. a lot of people say, you know, when they start, when they were on keto, they lost weight pretty but, quickly at the start. But then afterwards, it was just like nothing's happening. But why did they lose weight? They didn't lose weight. It's not very rarely someone's actually reached a state of ketosis. Yeah. Most people are just on low carbs when they're in keto. Mm. You've lost weight because as a result of cutting out these carbs, you've ended up in a deficit. The keto didn't do anything for you. As a result of you cutting out those big plates of rice, those big plates of tin men, and that overall, that means you've dropped your calories down and you're in a deficit. So you didn't lose weight because of keto. And who's going to stay eating just chicken and vegetables for the rest of their life? Again, I've never been on a diet, by the way. Not that I, I need, but you're right. that's why I'm, I'm, I'm asking these. You seem all right. Yeah, yeah I've never been on a, on, a, on a diet, so I don't know all these keto i was actually i did try uh, intermittent fasting which is fine i tried that for 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 some time and i thought that was quite and just to stay healthy um but again with that one i think again it's, it's what you eat as well so i'll tell you where fasting can come into play if you're someone that just can't stop eating so literally you sit and you just can't stop eating yeah. You sit and you just can't stop. That's you, don't, you can't control your portion. So what we do with some people like that, you make them fast. So that way, even if they can't stop eating, sorry, every, sorry, let's say you were to put someone like that on three, four meals a day. Every meal, they can't control their portion. So what you do, you make them fast. They have a, they have a time period to eat and they can't physically, it will be very difficult to eat enough to be in a surplus in that time period. So it just makes getting in a deficit easier. But the fasting in itself doesn't make you lose weight. Because a lot of people actually gain weight in Ramadan because yeah, of all the desserts. Yeah, because of all the desserts, the dahin, oh, come on, the dahin is literally just yeah, pure it's, calories. It's just oil. Yeah. It's called oil. Literally, dahin, it's <laughs> dahin, oil. So a lot of people gain weight in Ramadan and that kind of disproves the whole weight loss because you fast. But again, as a result of the fasting, it makes, some peop it, makes it easier for some people to stay in a deficit. Do you train in Shah Ramadan? 100%. When do you, when how do you train normally? I train at midnight. Ah, uh, midnight. So not while you're fasting. So I've, I'm, impossible while you're fasting. Not impossible, but I feel like I wouldn't be able to train as hard, even though some people do. But mm. alhamdulillah, I've been blessed to have a gym in my garden. I have a gym in my garden. Okay, nice. So I just go outside. You build that gym yourself, I'm guessing. My uncle was a big part of it. Okay, you set it up for because of your career. Yes, and I like just like having it there. Mm -hmm. It's very nice to have. Sometimes I don't want to go to the gym. I just go outside and train. So midnight, you're training in Shahar Ramadan. Midnight, I'm training. Amazing. I love it. Can you, can you, you know, and then obviously you got Suhoor time. 
it's tough. You probably eat. It's I very... mean, the whole day you're fasting. Yeah, it's tough. How do you have the energy to even train at midnight? It's tough. I'll be honest. Um, yeah, it's tough, but discipline. It's you. Training has to become a thing where it doesn't rely on motivation. Are you motivated to brush your teeth every morning? Yeah. You do it anyways. It doesn't matter if you're motivated. You're not. Are you, you motivated? Yeah, something that's work. Yeah. A lot. Some people don't want to go to work every day. Yeah, but they have to. Go. You get up and go to work. I don't want to train every day. I get up and I go train. Motivation shouldn't play a role in whether or not you're going to train. And if you rely on motivation, you're not going to stick to it. When I get clients message me, oh, I'm so motivated. I'm like, forget the motivation. Is this something you're you're willing to do for the rest of your life? Because motivation doesn't last. Discipline does. So I'm guessing training has to be a lifestyle. Hundred percent. If I relied on motivation, I promise you, I would not be where I am. Some days I don't want to go to work. Some days I can't be bothered. Some days I want to sleep in. Some days I don't want to do X, Y, Z. It doesn't matter. It has to get done. And then there are there are days I'm guessing where, like you said, like you, your your body just doesn't want to train. Okay, so here's the, here's the thing. You don't want to. There's days where where, where you, you must get out of bed and think I can't even be bothered to do anything, let alone go to the gym and push myself. So being so here's the thing. So when I say train. You have to be mindful of how you train as well. If your body's feeling battered, listen to your body. But I'm saying if you just can't be bothered, yeah, no, I'm not talking. That's about another that. story. Can't be bothered. It doesn't matter. I'm going to the gym. If I'm if I'm supposed to train that day, if the world turns upside down, I don't care. I'm going to the gym. And until you have that mindset where it does not matter what is going on in your life, of course, with certain exceptions, then you won't last. It needs to be something that relies on discipline, and people need to understand that. Because. I- Obviously, you're training your your physical body. No. Nah. But you need to also be mentally prepared. It's it's very reliant on your mental power. Uh, so the the research shows they go hand in hand as well. Right? Everything. So the research shows if you if you want to really put on muscle, you need to be within five reps of failure. Failure meaning, I mean, if you had a gun to your head, you couldn't do another one. I see most people they train for years, they don't change, and they always complain. But then you watch them train. They're having a laugh. They're talking during their sets. They finish. They're on a call. You're not training hard enough. It's, it, you, listen, there's nothing wrong with training. It's better than doing nothing. But if you're there and you want to see results, you have to push yourself. So it's a, it's a big mental game as well. Definitely. Coming back to Shah Ramadan, because, you know, it's, it is a whole month. And someone maybe who's on a diet, someone Correct. who's trying to gain muscle, someone who's trying to achieve their goal. Some people take the whole month out. And that that could slow down their Definitely. them reaching their goal, and if anything, take them back a few steps. Definitely. What kind of routine do you need to be on? Um, maybe you know you're lucky enough that you I'm have back. a gym in the back of yeah. your house. What if someone you know not all gyms are open twenty four hours. Yeah. You know, you know there are certain some people just work nine to fives as well. Yeah, and some people work nine to five, like you said. By the time they get home, they have what kind of routine do you need to be on? To make sure that you can during Shah Ramadan, which is quite an important month for Muslims, definitely, um, and you don't want to be losing God on the physically, spiritual, yeah. on the spiritual aspect, and on the spiritual aspect, like you got eyes of Qadr, going to the mosque. Of course, what kind of routine do you need to be on? So first, I think we need to get out of this all or nothing mindset. A lot of people have this mindset where I'm either killing myself six, seven days a week, or I don't go. And again, why a lot of people don't last? Same thing with the diet, all or nothing. I'm either perfect. Or I'm going to say completely F it and I'm going to let everything go. So I think first, accept that you can't always be 100% and that's okay. Secondly, I would get find, make a routine for yourself. So if you work a nine to five, okay, training at midnight isn't going to be possible. Train right before you, uh, right before iftar, right before you break your fast. Maybe you're not going to be able to train as hard. Again, it's completely fine. It's one month. You're not going to lose everything in a month. Maybe sacrifice the number of days that you go. Maybe change the workouts that you do to make it a bit easier. But the main thing is get in a routine. Secondly, have suhoor. Wake up for suhoor and eat suhoor. You can't just have one meal and train and expect to be okay. And if you do train after um, iftar, get some electrolytes in. It'll help you stop feeling uh, lightheaded and it'll help you. You'll feel a lot better when you train as well. Again, talking about our, you know Muslims and our community. Correct. We have a huge problem in our community of certain... Uh, <laughs> obesity level yeah definitely we have people from a young age having uh maybe i don't know cholesterol or or diabetes or when you look at you know your own community right. 
do you sometimes think why aren't they coming to me or how no. can I help them or how can how, how can, can I, I help, help? that's yeah, definitely rather something than, yeah. yeah I meant to, how can I go out and help them because there's there's, there's a lot of spiritual healing happening at our centers correct which is important which is vital 100%. but what about their physical I feel healing? so first of all I'm never like why don't you come to me mm. but I think the biggest thing is going to be education because as I was going back to what I was saying, I, if I go back to what I was saying, a lot of people think it's a, you have to be all in, you have to 24 seven chicken breast, but it doesn't have to be like that. I feel like if we show the youth that it's, you don't have to actually do that much to improve and see a change, then we can make a big change. Also, maybe holding classes out for the community in our centers, that could be something that, that's something that I'm looking to do as well, soon as well. And like I said, education, in my opinion, is gonna be the biggest thing. I was going to say, you know, with, with, with our community, are you putting yourself forward to do stuff? I'm trying. So I was supposed to go yesterday, but I got the dates mistaken, but I'm trying. But also it's, it's going to come for the parents as well, mm. because the parents need to control what their kids eat. And I've seen it. The, yeah. Parents, especially when they're young, the kids just going to eat whatever their mom gives them. And you don't have to restrict them for foods. Like I was saying, just measure it out for them because the poor kid, their self, their confidence is going to be affected if they're overweight and their personality is gonna change in the future. And I believe that this responsibility lies with the parents. You should not let your kid become overweight, especially when they're young. When they're old and they make their own choices, fair enough. But when you're feeding them, you shouldn't allow for that to happen. Especially when it's so easy to control their portions or maybe make them eat the same things, but select lower calorie alternatives. With people being conscious about their image uh, through social media, um, do you feel more people Again, this is not just our community, but I'm saying generally outside. More people are going for that sort of six pack look, looking, you know, because, because you know, there's a certain image now that they may see on social media that they'll, they'll, they'll want to follow. Correct. So, do you feel more people are turning towards that? Or? I feel like more and more people, definitely more and more people are getting into fitness. But not everyone wants to look like that, and that's completely fine. That you'll look like that if you dedicate your whole, whole life to it. You don't have to dedicate your whole life to it. Even if you train once a week, it's better than nothing. Twice a week is better than nothing. Go for a walk if you haven't trained before. Start by walking. Start by jogging. Go to a class once a week. Do anything. Just get active. Join a, join a, join a local center where you play football with a bunch of people every week. Play table tennis. Find something. The key thing is you have to enjoy it. If you don't enjoy it, you're not going to last. Find something that you enjoy and get moving. As in... People don't understand the importance of resistance and strength training. If you look at the rehab for most injuries, most, it's going to be some kind of strength training. And people need to realize that you need to be strong to live a nice, to be able to live and enjoy your life for long. Otherwise, what's going to happen? Our community, we reach 30, 40, I jazz it, kabar it, my back, back my this, my Everyone's that. Everyone's got a back problem. Everyone, I've gotten old, I can't, this, my this, knees. this, my knees. I can't get up from the chair. Help me do this. Come walk on my back. Why? Because <laughs> they don't. They don't do anything. <laughs> Have you had that as well? Of walk on my have. back. What's that all about? It's just, <laughs> it's just Iraqi. It's Iraqi. Stand on my back and it will feels crack. good. I guess. Yeah. Um, but I, I think people need to get that it's not something just to look good. It's going to improve your quality of life significantly, and for mental health as well. Whenever someone has problems with their mental health, I think just get into the gym get in good shape and see how much better you feel i'm not saying depression is of course it's real i'm not denying that or anything yeah. but i'm saying just try it get if you're out of shape go to the gym get in good shape and see how much better you feel i'm not saying your depression will be cure, cured or anything like that of course not i'm just saying you'll feel significantly better when you look at yourself in the mirror and you're happy with what you see your self your self-confidence is gonna you're gonna feel a lot better not just that, every time you go to the gym, you're releasing endorphins, the feel good hormone. Mm. You're going to socialize with people. You're going to be forced to leave your house. So, and it puts you in a routine. Not only, not only in the gym are you going to be forced to do things outside of the gym. You're going to be forced to eat properly. You're going to be forced to sleep better. You're going to be forced to get in a bit more of a routine. And all of these things are going to help with improving your mental state as well as your physical state. Now, as a PT before, you know, PTs would probably give their cards out or put a poster out in the gym. It's now really different because of Definitely. social media definitely how do you go about you know promoting your business I as well like, as your training on social media i feel like now social media is like your cv mm. people look if they want to use your services for whatever it is whether it's your food whether you sell food whether it's training 
Social media is a CV. So me, I don't overthink it. I literally just am myself. I post me training my clients. I post my own training and I post whatever I want to post. And people seem to like that. And that's literally all I do. I don't put too much thought into it. And I try to educate whenever I can. And that try to educate people in whatever field you're in. If you're a teacher on X subject, try to teach people about that. If I'm a trainer in the fitness and gym industry, I try to teach people about that. There's a stigma um, on women training yes. in our community. Definitely. Uh, and a lot of people think if someone's going to the gym, it's to build muscles. Or if they're doing weights, it's to gain muscles. Get and everyone thinks, why would they? Some, or some would say, why would a woman need muscles? Heard that. So, it, firstly, I'm sh anyone that does weight doesn't mean they're going to no. gain muscle. So, these people that you see on TV, on the bodybuilding stages, these women that you're like, no, I'd never want to look like that. I'm not going to go to the gym. They're on exogenous hormones. Most of them. No, I don't want to say all. Mm. Unless they have very good genetics. Most of them are injecting testosterone if, or other hormones. So, you're not going to look like that by going to the gym. Like, you're going to get stronger. You're going to look, quote, unquote, more toned, even though I don't like that word. Mm. And you're just going to feel better. You will not get big. Unless you dedicate your whole life for years and years and years to getting big, you're not going to accidentally get too big. I hope we can get more women. And I realize there's now women personal trainers who can do it. Those in hijab can do it privately. Yes. So inshallah, we can pr promote them also. Definitely. To be doing. Definitely. Uh, and there's a lot more private studios now for people that want to feel more comfortable training. Or you don't need to go to a gym. Just order some equipment at home. Do it. And home. you can do it with the bare minimum. Well, uh, Yusuf, thank you for your time. Pleasure. And inshallah, we'll see you soon.